Federal law prohibits gender discrimination. Various federal programs offer special loans to female business owners. Congress sets rules for how women need to be treated in the workforce and universities. There are literally dozens of government agencies that exist in part due to the long-standing presumption that men and women are biologically distinct. They're different. Now, the Trump administration, in the spirit of all of that, wants to define gender on a clear scientific basis, but is running into headwinds politically in trying to do that. Tammy Bruce joins us tonight to respond. So, Tammy, let me just ask you, um, what happens to women if the definition of sex, of gender, becomes up to the discretion of the individual? Yeah, well, your opening comments, I think, made that pretty clear. Uh, we have a scientific framework that recognizes women and men. Um, as a woman who's worked most of uh, my adult life for the welfare of women, uh, that's important. You know, we are important. We lead different kinds of lives. Our, our life experiences are different. Uh, we're subject to certain kinds of different kinds of violence, sexual violence, etc. So, I mean, it's important, but the, the important thing also is, when it comes to the government and law, is that something is actually administratable, so that something is clear, that something is defined, and of course science, as the left always tells us, is important uh, and is, and is an, a, a distinctive framework of how we make decisions. The problem here is, is that Barack Obama created a framework where, for Title IX, people could, uh, would be judged and placed in a framework based on simply what they claimed. Uh, now, I think the transgendered issue is a serious one. People go right. through serious life changes. Uh, Chelsea Manning just posted uh, Twitter photos with the, her having the surgery. We know, of course, Caitlyn Jenner has. Uh, uh, hundreds of Americans have gone through this, and right. it's a serious issue. Uh, and I think that what we're looking at here for the government, especially as a gay woman, if you're looking for the government uh, to, and the reaction to this change has been uh, remarkable, uh, it, to confirm your value uh, or your existence as a person, we're all in trouble because the government is not the place to get that. Uh, right now, uh, any kind of rule, I think, for the government's got to be something that helps us administrate a framework like Title IX and recognize the differences between men and women. While transgendered individuals, of course, this doesn't erase them. It means that their relationship with themselves and with the medical community and right. how they identify remain, is personal and that they can work through the system within that framework. Yeah, I mean, it's not an attack on anyone to, no. to start to worry that maybe women are, are about to be hurt in this. That, that's my concern. We well, should at least talk yes. it through, I think, rationally, well, and I'm well, glad yes. that you helped us do that. I exactly. Tammy, thank you. Thank you, Tucker. Well, getting into Harvard is tough for anybody, but it's a lot harder for some, and it depends on your skin color, to a large extent, it turns out. We know that because of documents related to a discrimination lawsuit brought by Asian applicants to Harvard. And those documents show the university has spent decades rigging its admissions policies at the behest of university leaders who want a significantly less Asian student body. It's hard to believe, but that is happening even today. Jason Hill is a philosophy professor at DePaul University and author of the book We Have Overcome. He opposes the admissions practices of Harvard. Jason, thanks a lot for joining us. So a lot of us grew up hearing about the discriminatory practices of the Harvard admissions department, believing that they were no longer in existence, only to discover that they are and that Harvard is defending them, even having been caught using them. What is this? That's right. Well, I think this is, there's no other word to describe it than just nefarious. I mean, any institution that uses race explicitly as a way, and ex explicitly uses race with such zeal as a way of excluding persons from their institutions is just plain evil. And what makes it even more nefarious is that we're talking about a group that it has achieved the highest academic record, the highest SAT scores, but has the lowest admission rate among any racial group. This makes it even more nefarious, and 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 I just I think the word that comes to my mind is evil here. It's, so, it's just plain. It, if you're telling kids, and we do tell kids all through young adulthood, through their teen years in high school, we say get the highest grades you can and the highest test scores. Those are the criteria they're going to be used um, to judge you. And it turns out that's a lie. It makes all of us kind of cynical, doesn't it, this, this fake meritocracy? It's, it's profoundly anti-American, and it's, uh, it's, it goes in the face of, 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 of what is, 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 is the American dream, which is meritocracy, which is going by fairness, which is going by working hard, um, not judging people by race, by ethnicity, by 
you know, morally neutral factors, but judging people based on merit, on talent, on sheer grit, and tenacity and resilience. And what Harvard is saying is that there are other criteria that we're going to judge you by, ex superfluous and extraneous criteria, and anything that you exhibit, such as talent and merit, we're actually going to discount those and use them against you. And when we have a model a group that aspire to the best virtues that America can offer, such as grit, tenacity, and hard work, and display yes. those to the American people, we say we're going to discount those and we're going to actually use them against you. And I think that's just very, very unfair. They believed in our values and we punished them for it. It's really sad. We Thank punished you. them you, for you it. You put that so nicely. Professor, thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, he hosts the most popular television show in the AM. He has written a bunch of best-selling books. You can probably bake 30-minute brownies in five minutes.